welcome to lesson 2.4 in the Alice tutorial series. Today will just be a quick video that uh, takes us through how to move the camera by methods. Uh, thus far, all the objects we've added, we've manipulated by the mouse. Uh, we've used some of the, the resize tool and the move objects freely tool and some of the tools that are in the uh, add object screen to move things around the screen. But you run into some problems in that very small parts can sometimes be difficult to grab without zooming in and adjusting the camera. Uh, there's an alternative way to move objects and that's through the use of methods. These are the same methods that we'll use in later lessons to control the flow of animation. So let's go ahead and real quick take a look at how do we move objects around the screen by using methods and not just mouse clicks. So to give you an example of how to move an object through the use of methods, we're first going to need an object on the screen. So let's go ahead and add an object. And I want to add a human, but uh, let's use one that we haven't used so far. So let's go to high school, select student and teachers, and I'm going to pull the slacker. So I'm going to put the slacker front and center here. And so we've got our slacker on the screen. And in the previous lessons, we've learned how to move this guy around the screen using our mouse and some of these different selector buttons up here. So I can take the slacker and move him around. And I can change his elevation and move him up and down. This isn't always the easiest way to go, however. I mean, a lot of times for, for general movements and getting something into the right position on the screen, it's just fine. But when you start working particularly with really small parts, it's difficult to get a hold of the correct spot on an object every time. Or like, for example, if I wanted to, uh, let's see if the slacker has an eye. Now the slacker doesn't have an eye, so we can't necessarily manipulate the eyebrows, but uh, in some of the objects we saw, you can manipulate the eyebrows. And that's really difficult to get a hold of when you're using the mouse. So this is where using methods is going to become very useful for us. So with this object added, uh, a lot of the times, uh, you know, the most simple way to get an object where you want it on the screen is just to grab the object, move it freely, and maybe drag it around the screen. And that works really well. But sometimes it's difficult to get very specific body parts. You know, the slacker doesn't necessarily have eyelid control, but if I was trying to control an object that had eyelids, getting a hold of that with the mouse can be really difficult without zooming in really close. Using methods to move an object is something that can make fine adjustments a little bit easier. Let's say I want to take this object and put his arms down at his side. In general, the way I would try and do that is turn effect subparts on, use tumble objects, and grab just the arm, and start moving that until the object is about where I want it. The trouble is, while I'm doing this, I'm also rotating the object in some weird directions, and I'm not entirely certain that this is where I want his hand. All I want him to do is drop his hand to his side so that his palms are flush against his jeans, but when I'm using this right here, the mouse is making his hand rotate and I can't quite get it where I want it. If I try this other hand here, the same thing happens. It takes some trial and error and eventually I get something that, well, that might work. Let's reset this object using Control-Z to undo my previous actions, and let's go ahead and move him using methods. If I select the entire slacker, I can move him just like I do with the mouse, only I can do this with what's called method control. So I've got him moving around here. and Let's right click on the slacker, select methods, and I get a huge list of all the different things that I can move, I, that I can manipulate the slacker with. Move, turn, roll, resize. So I've got this big list. Lesson 5.1 and 5.2 will cover a lot of these in more detail, but let's just say we want the slacker to move backwards. I want to move him away from the camera, but I want to move him by a specific distance. I want to move him five meters away from the camera. Well, I can use this move objects freely tool and push him back to what I think is five meters, but it's really just a guessing game. 
Instead, I'm going to right click on the slacker, select methods, tell the slacker to move backwards, and then I'm going to select a, an amount of 5 meters. This is telling my object that I want it to move backwards exactly 5 meters. When I select this, the object will move backwards exactly 5 meters. By the same token, I can bring them back by selecting methods, move forward 5 meters, and he'll be back in the exact same spot he left. I can take the object and I can turn it around. In this case, I can take the object and I can turn it to the left by a half revolution, which will have him face away from the camera. And I can turn him back by selecting turn left half a revolution. This gives me some more exact control over my objects. It's not perfect for every scenario, but let's go back to trying to move the arms. You know, I showed you using the mouse to drop his arms to his side was a little bit difficult because his hands would kind of tumble, and I couldn't quite get it so his palms faced his jeans. Using my objects panel here on the left, I can select specific body parts. And so let's right click on his left arm, select methods, and we can tell now that only his left arm will move because instead of saying slacker, it's the slacker's upper body left arm that we want to move turn roller resize. In this case, we want to roll his left arm to the left by one half revolution. So let's give that a try and see what happens. Well, one half revolution was much too far. So I'm going to use Control Z to back out of this and try again. You'll find a lot of method object manipulation is a bit of trial and error. So let's use method, roll. Uh, we, we don't want the slacker upper body. In fact, I right clicked on the wrong, wrong object here. This is his entire upper body. I want just his left arm. So let's right click on just left arm. Method, we want to roll it left, one quarter revolution. Well, that's better, but it's still not quite what I'm looking for. I might have to use a custom amount here. So I'll use control Z to undo that action. Right click on left arm, go to method, roll, left, and let's try 0 0.20 revolutions. 0.25 was a little too much, but not by much. Hit OK, and that looks about right. And maybe I want to go a little bit further, but 0.2 looks about right to me. I can now go to his right arm, select methods, and we're going to roll his right arm right by that same 0.2 revolutions. I've now created an object that looks a little bit more natural and his hands are down to his side and I didn't have to fumble with this tumble command. If I were to, let's, let's have him face the camera here. So here we go and I'm going to use my duplicate tool and make sure if you had effect subparts selected, make sure that's unselected because when you go to duplicate your object, if subparts is selected and you drag this guy off, you're just going to drag his torso, it won't select his feet. And that's not exactly what we're looking for, so let's delete that errant object. Make sure effect subparts is not checked. And let's go ahead and drag this guy to the right. I want to create an object, an object that is exactly twice as big as the one I just copied. I can do that using methods, simply by, one, making sure that copy objects is off, but right click select methods and resize him to twice as big or a custom amount if I wish to do that. That guy is now twice as big. I'm going to raise him so his feet don't go through the grass. And now I've got an object that I know is exactly twice the size as the object I copied. I can also take another copy of this guy, right click and resize him to half as big as he was. Oh, let's go ahead and uh, turn off our save reminder. Uh, resize him to half as big. That's going to shrink him and then lower him so that he's just off the grass. And now I have objects. I have a parent object here in the middle, and I have one that's exactly half as big and one that's exactly twice as big. Well, I can do this same activity with the resize command here. It's really a guesstimate. I don't really know their size in relation to one another. 
But by using the method form of control, I can type in a specific number for all these things that I want to happen. And it makes it a little bit easier to create objects in comparison to one another. That's just a little bit about how to move, change, and manipulate objects through methods. As you use Alice, you will definitely find yourself, uh, you, you'll find the method that works best for you and the one that works in every scenario and what works best for the scene you're creating. But uh, I just, before I forgot, wanted to take a uh, second or two to look at how to move objects with methods because you're not just limited to mouse controls. There is no challenge program for this lesson right here, lesson 2.4. As always, if you have any questions about what we did here or anything in your Alice Worlds, I'd be happy to help you out. Just go ahead and leave your questions in the comment section and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching and have a great day.